Hi there. Today we're going to talk about designing for 3D shadow boxes. Um, this was a request from someone on Facebook, so I thought I'd make a video on it. And in particular, we're going to be using the Silhouette software to design our shadow boxes. So today I'm just going to be talking about the design aspect of it. Um, I won't be like physically showing you how to cut it out. I don't have a video or any recording equipment, so I can just do work on the screen. Um, but I'll link below to some videos that use the Cricut software, um, but that show you how to put it together in the end stage. We're just going to do the design today. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to do two different versions. One of them is sort of this like layered fox design where it's a pretty easy design. You can take any sort of silhouette shape and um, do a little cutout like this in different colored paper and sort of stack them together and it creates like a cool 3D effect. And the other one we're going to do is more of a scene. And so this is more like you'd have, um, you want like more transparent layers as you go back and you sort of layer on top and build a scene up. So we're going to do both of these. So I'm just going to move them off to the side so that they're not in the way. So we're going to start with the fox one. So I'm going to open up um, my file explorer and I've just saved onto my desktop into a file, into a folder. I've saved this PNG. It's got a fox and the mountains and that's what we're going to be using today. If you've got an SVG, you can do that as well. Uh, I just want to show the extra step if you've got a PNG. So I brought this into my design space, just click and drag. And then if you've, there's a couple of different settings. There's a setting where if you bring in a PNG with a transparent background, it will auto trace it for you. I don't have that turned on. And if you're using a JPEG or anything with a white background, you'll have to trace it. So we're going to, I'm going to show you that quickly. So the butterfly tool here, select trace area. It's really easy to trace a black silhouette like this. It's super simple. All you want to do is increase the threshold until it's all yellow. I always lower the scale down and then I just click trace. And then we can move our black and actually delete that. And what we're left with is cut lines. So I'm going to release the compound path on this to give me my individual shapes. And because we're, move, we're starting with the fox, I'm going to just move my mountains out of the way. And I've got my fox shape here. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to make a square the size of my frame. So up here on the square tool, um, I'm also using business edition. You might notice at the top here, business edition business edition, but none of the tools that I'm using are in business edition. So you should be able to do this just with basic edition if that's all you've got. So I'm going to click and drag to build a rectangle. And if I click shift, it becomes a square and you would measure the light box that you are designing to. But let's say we're doing a 10 centimeter light box. And if you go over to here, you can actually select exactly the dimensions that you want. It. So that makes it a 10 centimeter box. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fox on top. And I reckon this fox is probably a little bit too big. So I'm just going to click on it and make it a little bit smaller just so that it sits nicely in the center. And I really want this to be right in the center. So I'm going to click and hold and drag to select my two shapes. Uh, go over to the align tool and I'm going to center them. You can also click like center middle and like center horizontal and center vertically. But either way, we've now got a centered shape. Now to get this sort of stacked design. I'm just going to click on my fox, go to my offset tool and do an internal offset. And you can do it as large or as small as you like to get as many or as few layers as you'd like. But I'm just going to leave it at 0.2. Seems like a pretty good size to me and click apply. And then I'm just going to do another offset. Oops, sorry, another internal offset click on that. Click apply. And I want to keep them all at 0.2. So that there's this nice, like even stacked design going down. Another one, apply, and maybe one more. So that looks pretty good to me. I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six layers there. So now that we have our six layers, at the moment they're just um, an outline, and we actually want them to cut out with a square around them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste my square so that I've got six copies of it, and then I'm going to click select all the squares and align to the left and align to the top. So now my squares are all in exactly the same position and my foxes are all in the right position. So what I'm going to want to do is I want to click on the outside fox and holding shift, just select one square. And then you're going to, you can right click or you can go into the modify and click make compound path. Now it doesn't look like much has changed, but if you fill this in now with like say a light purple, you can see that it's filled in just around the outside. We're going to do that with every layer. So then select the next piece of fox, holding shift, 
select the square, I usually just right click and make compound path and then fill it in with the next darkest purple. Click the next piece of fox and then here we've actually got this which is separate so we want to make sure we also select the tail and the square, make compound path, fill it with the next colour purple, next bit of fox and the square, right click make compound path and you actually don't have to fill it with purple this is it just really helps with visualizing what your shape is going to like end up looking like um, but you don't actually have to do the filling oops so this is what happens if you don't make a compound path so i'm just going to undo that make the compound path and then fill it with purple and then the last one you should have one shape left and one square make compound path and fill it in with purple and then what you can do is select all of these and align to center and you'll get this really cool shape i've sort of screwed up the coloring here but let's just use the eyedropper and select the nice colors that i had over here for my mock-up it's a bit better and what you actually now have noticed is that there's a white spot in the center here so what i actually want to do is make one more square and i've still actually got it copied on the clipboard but if you didn't make another square select it make sure it's exactly the same size so i want 10 by 10 and then we're going to fill this in with whatever our base background color is going to be and again we're going to send it to the back and align it to center so then we would just move this off to the side of our map you would load up your darkest color and you would just cut out a square or you could probably just cut this with a ruler if you wanted to but you can load up your darkest color and cut a square move that off the map and then you would load up your second darkest color cut out this shape and layer it on top and so on and so forth until you have all your shapes cut out of cardstock and then you would stack them together in your light box to create the cool the cool stacked effect so let me just put them all back together so that you can see it again and if it looks a bit funny with the red lines those are just cut lines so you wouldn't actually see them so if you wanted to turn them off you can go up to your line style and just select transparent so that you can see what it would look like so that's your fox um, 3d shadow box the next one we're going to talk about is this one so i've got mine grouped together but i'm just going to ungroup it and show you what it looks like so the front piece is a frame with a, the first bit of mountain and then behind that you would layer your second bit of mountain and your third bit of mountain and you would keep on layering like this and then your final piece is going to be a moon and if i sort of hover this over the background you can see that it's cut out the moon shape and then your light would shine through so your moon and your stars would be the brightest and as you go forward it would get darker because there's more layers or you could cut this out of different colored cardstocks either way so this method is a little bit different and this is where your sort of like artistic and creative ability would come into play design and you can design whatever you want don't have to be this exact picture you can make it your own so first thing i'm going to do is start off with a square holding the shift key to get out our uh, nice square shape and then in the transform tool I want to make it exactly 10 centimeters and for this light box you actually want to we want to have a border around the shape so what I'm going to do you could do an internal offset or you could just make another square so in this case I'm just going to make another square and I'm going to want it to be let's do it exactly nine centimeters so that would give us a half a centimeter border And then we're going to want to center it so again you can come up here and use the center button and center it together now if you fill this in with black you'll see that it filled both squares in and we actually want a border so we're going to again right click and make compound path so what that does is makes it like a donut rather than two squares on top of each other it's just the outline so now we've got our border shape and it's transparent in the middle and we're going to want to keep a copy of that off to the side just in case we need more copies of it so control paste um, but otherwise we want to make again a bunch of copies one two three four five maybe six copies I'm not sure exactly what our mountain scenescape is going to look like yet so just make six copies of it and then stack them all up together and then we're going to start playing around with our mountains so i've got eight mountain shapes here to choose from so i'm going to go through with you and show you a couple of different ways you could do this first is to just put one on top and i want to make this one a little bit bigger so that it meets sort of edge to edge and what you want to do with all your shapes is make sure they're overlapping 
at some uh, to the borders. So the first one I'm just going to place down here, and then I'm going to hold Shift, click on a border, and then again we're going to we're going to weld these together. So you can actually come over into the Pathfinder tool wherever it's gone, Pathfinder, and you want to click Weld. And that's going to join them together. So now we have our first frame with our first mountain, and you can leave that in place and maybe send it to the back. So let's send it back up here, just so that you can see where it's going to, like how your layers are going to build. So maybe my next layer, I want to use this sort of taller, pointier one. And you can see that it's going to kind of not layer all that nicely. So maybe I want to find one that's got a little bit more happening over to the left. And maybe I'll make it a little bit taller. So you, again, this is just where you start playing around with the design that you want. Now this has got too much happening over on the left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift down and select the frame and bring it down low. Because what I'm going to want to do is actually cut out a part of this uh, mountain so that it fits within the frame. So I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to slice down the middle here with my slice tool, holding shift to give it a straight edge. And I hate the slice tool, so I'm actually going to undo that. And what I'm going to do instead is have my mountain and my frame draw another square over the bit that I want to get rid of. Click my mountain and my new square, and then I'm going to click crop. Oh, wrong one. Subtract. Oh. Subtract. So subtract my square from my mountain, and then I can just delete my square. I'm left with my mountain, and I can weld them together. And then I could layer that back on top. I could fill it in with a slightly, slightly less dark gray, and then send it to the back so that I can see how my picture is going to start layering. And you can keep centering these. So for my next one, I might flip this because I actually want like a nice big peak coming up over this side. So I'm going to flip horizontally. And it actually looks quite good just there like that, I think. And you can see there's some space underneath this. So I'll show you how to get rid of that. But again, just select another border, right click and then weld. And then what you're going to do is because we actually want this filled in as well. So what you could do is you could draw a rectangle on top and just weld that together. Get it back on here. Fill it with a slightly lighter gray again and send it to the back. So now our mountain shape, mountain scene is coming together and I reckon I want one more behind here. Again, we're gonna have to crop off some of this outside edge. So just put a square over the top of it. Crop, subtract that out. Select my mountain and my frame and select weld. Bring it over here so I can see what I'm doing. Put a square on top of it. Weld them together. Bring it back over here. Fill. So basically what you can see is that it's the same steps over and over again. You're just placing the objects you want within your frame, and then you're welding them to the edge of the frame. And it's basically as simple as that. You can then design whatever you like. You could have a desert landscape or a beach with palm trees. As long as some part of the shape is touching the edge so that it's joined to the edge of the frame, you can just um, build whatever shapes you like, basically. I think we'll just leave it there for now, though, and I'll show you what we do uh, for the back. So let's get rid of these two extra frames. So in this, we've just got four layers, and if I drag them away from each other, you can see my four my four frames, and I can bring them back together. And then for the moon, what we actually want is a 10 by 10 square without the frame, because this is going to be our final back piece. So again, we're going to make it exactly 10 by 10. And again, you would make it the size of um, your frame. And just so that I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to fill it in with gray, like a really light gray. And for this, I'm going to send it to the back. Now, what I want is a moon shape. So you could find a moon shape online, but you can actually make a moon shape using two circles. So I'm going to draw a circle holding the shift key down, makes it a perfect circle. And I'm going to draw another smaller circle next to it and just overlap them a bit. And then I'm going to select both circles, go to my modify tool and click subtract. And then you're left with a cute little moon shape. So I'm going to put that on top. And this is going to be the brightest bit. This is going to have the most light shining through. So I want this, I'm going to fill this in with white. Um, I might just show you how to make a little star too, because it's quite a nifty tool. 
So again, we're just going to use basic shapes. These are all tools that are in the basic version of the software. So I'm going to make a square and I'm going to hold down the shift key. And then I'm going to go up to my, my point editor and I'm going to add some extra points and drag them in. So you just click on the line with your point editor selected, which is this one here, and drag it in. So this makes like a pointy star, which is kind of cool and it's like in and of itself. That could be quite a nice shape to use, but I actually want sort of a curved shape. So I'm going to go back into my point editor or you can just double click on your shape and then holding shift, I'm going to select the four inside points and I'm going to make a curve. And now we've got this cool like curved star shape. So I'm going to fill that in with white and I might just make these cut line. No, I'll leave them there. And I'm going to paste this a couple of times, rotate it. And maybe a slightly smaller one, a little bit rotated. And then what I want is just some little pin pricks, so some little like circle circles that will, when the light shines through them, will kind of look like stars, even though they don't have much shape. So in this case, you can see that none of these objects are touching the edge. And that's okay, because instead of a frame, we're going to have the whole back piece. Um, so what we want to do is we want to sort of line everything up the way we want it, and then we want to move our other four frames out of the way. What you're going to do is select all of these objects, and you're going to come over to your path, your modify tool, and click subtract. And that's going to cut out the shapes we just made from the layer behind. So now you can see when I sort of if I bring it to the front of the screen, you can see that it's like transparent through there. So that will cut out of your back piece and let the most light through. So then we can just send that to the back again and layer it behind our frames. So you can see that it's um, slightly different to the one that I created yesterday. And you could fill, you could change again the line color on this so that you can see it a bit more clearly. But again, you can design whatever you like in this case. So it's all about what you want from your frame. This one looks maybe a little bit softer. This one's a little bit spikier. They're just different variations. So then what you would do to cut this out is you would just pull this over to the side. You would load up your cardstock and you would cut out the first frame, move that off to the side, load up your second piece of cardstock and cut out your next frame and so on and so forth until the final piece you might do out of cardstock or you might do out of paper or there's all sorts of looks you can get using different materials. Um, but yeah, you just cut out your five layers and then you would stack them together in your light box or 3D box. Um, again, there'll be a link down below for a video that uses a Cricut, but I, it helps with the building of it in the frame. Um, but this is just sort of the design side of it. So let me know if you have any questions. I know I move quite quickly. Uh, it's just kind of the speed that I work at. So I'm trying to slow it down a little bit, but a lot of it's quite repetitive too. It's like you have your shape and you weld it to the frame. You have your shape and you weld it to the frame and you just keep doing that over and over again. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you'd like to see anything specific in a different, like a specific design or something you're struggling with. But I'm always happy to answer questions in the comments or put up another video to show you if you've got a specific example in mind. Uh, so let me know if this helped and uh, happy crafting. Bye.